Okay guys, so this evening I'm going to show you how to create your own planet. Straight to the big stuff, don't mess around with the little stuff, that's my motto. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is load up an image that we know will work, or that we're confident that will work, because you never actually know that you've done them. Okay, so here's one that I know will work, so I used it the other day. Now, the images that work best are panoramic in nature, long and thin like this. Um, you can do planets with square images or the more normal sort of proportions, but they tend not to work so well. Um, okay, now this one is from the other night. I've already cropped it to a panoramic shape uh, because there was a lot of um, just blank black sky at the top. But uh, we can crop it further and make it even more suitable. And I'll just show you how. Now, if you look at the bottom here for a start, there are clumps of foliage. It's a vegetation that uh, sneaked into the bottom of the photo. We can get rid of them. And also, there's still quite a bit of dark sky up there that will uh, be neither use nor ornament in the final planet. So we'll get rid of that as well. So we can crop it. Not made a very good job of that. Move it up. Get rid of more greenery. There you go. It's a bit better. Crop that. Let me get rid of a bit more of the sky at the top, actually. A lot of this is trial and error, but as I've always said to people, the more you do, uh, the more you recognise images that will work, and the faster you can work with them to create your planet. Um, I can normally, if I wasn't nattering away, you could make one of these in probably less than 10 minutes with a reasonable image. Um, but this might take a bit longer. Okay, so now we've got our little panoramic image. We'll check whether the horizon's level because it just looks like this one might be a little bit wonky, a bit slopey to one side, but actually it's okay. It's just that the original image was taken with um, with a wide angle lens, which tends to distort buildings a bit. So you've got things that look like they're leaning in a bit and it um, makes them look like they're not quite level, but that, that's pretty good. <laughs> now you've got your panoramic and uh, that's the type of image that works. Now the next critical thing possibly the most critical thing of all actually is to check both sides and see how similar they are. So down the left here, we've got blank sky, some lights and then reflections in the water. But on the right hand side, we've got a building here. Um, now, what you have to bear in mind is that the two sides of this image are gonna to join together in the final planet. So they need to be as similar as possible and that building is gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So we need to crop it again and get rid of that to make this right-hand side more like the left-hand side. So again, a quick crop. We'll just leave the light in, but take the post out, I think. Crop it up there. I'm using Photoshop elements, by the way, not full Photoshop, although the technique is the same and I think most of the buttons are the same. It's fairly basic stuff. Okay, so now we've got it cropped. The left hand side and the right hand side look fairly similar. Yeah, the lights reflecting the water are different, but you'll see that won't matter because there's, there's quite a lot of different lights reflecting in the water. So your eyes won't uh, spot that as, uh, as too bad a um, change. Well, you won't get a sort of a, an obvious straight line through it that you do with some. Okay, the next thing you have to do is turn this panoramic image into a square one. So you go up to image at the top in the drop down menu and resize, go to image size. Now, normally you would have these two boxes, the constrained proportions and the scale styles boxes ticked because they're what uh, help you keep the proportions of the original image when you're just making them larger or smaller, which is usually what you do when you change image, image size. This is quite an odd thing to do really, to make an image square. Um, so anyway, so you have to get rid of those, make sure that those aren't ticked. Now you can uh, adjust the width and the height independently of each other. And you have a choice really, you either make it as wide as it is high or as high as it is wide. Um, and that really, that depends on what size of image you want. Uh, but just for this, I'll make it as high as it is wide. So that needs to change to five, seven, eight, six. Hit okay. And it suddenly goes square and all a bit weird. To fit on the screen again, okay. You can see how stretched it is vertically. Now, the next thing you do 
is to rotate it 180 degrees, basically turn it upside down. Okay, now we're actually only one step away from creating the final planet here, believe it or not. Next thing to do, go into filter, the drop down to distort, and then across and halfway down, polar coordinates, which you click on. Now you've got two choices here, rectangular to polar or polar to rectangular. We choose the top one. Click OK and watch your planet form. There you go. It's just planetized it. Now for me, that looks bottom heavy because the main objects in the image, the big multiplex cinema there and the cathedral, are at the bottom. And so that, that just doesn't look balanced to me. So what we can do, go back up to image, rotate, rotate it 180 degrees again. And that looks a lot better. You've got the bigger objects at the top. That just tends to make a more balanced, balanced image. Um, and that is your final planet, really. Now, often you might have to uh, sort out the join. Now, the join is here from the centre down there. Now, unless you look close, I don't think that looks too bad. But we'll zoom in anyway, which is under the view tab. So I can see a bit better. So if you look down here, you can you can see where the line is, and especially where this silver grey building is, there's a bit of a sharp edge. And what you could do is get the clone tool, which is that brush there. And you see the you know the circle shows you what you've got. And you can copy a bit from this side to that side, and it will get get you away from having a straight line through there. The other thing which is very useful in these to get rid of that straight line join is if you've got trees or clouds and there's a tree here and that would be quite handy to clone that bit across to there. I can just try it. That's, that sort of shows you what you can do. Trees and clouds are very good for cloning across straight lines because they're automatically sort of diffuse and a bit random um, and they don't look too artificial if you clone them. Uh, you can use a smaller smaller brush size, a too smaller one. Maybe move the building across a little bit as well in places. Go back the other way with that one. Bit here as well, maybe. Once you've started, it's a bit never ending, really. This you just don't want to do too much. This is the sort of thing you can do just to, to get rid of that obvious line. Say so that one that wasn't too obvious at all. Now, if you pull back, okay, there isn't an obvious straight line there, which you often do find when you create planets, especially with daytime images. But if you start off with something that, uh, as we saw with this one, the left and the right-hand sides are almost identical anyway, that would be a big problem. So you can save yourself a lot of trouble just by choosing the right image right at the start. Now, the other thing that um, I like to do with these uh, is to put a background layer on. Again, this image is it, it's worked really, really easy. You haven't got too many complications. But especially with daytime images or anything really that's not black, you'll find that in the corners up here, down here, all these corners will have a strange stripey effect in there just caused by the, the, um, uh, the distortion filter that created your planet. Um, and you want to get rid of those. So I'll just show you how to do that, even though we don't particularly need to do it with this one. So go up to layer, add new fill layer, solid color, click OK, you know, you can choose your color. Yellow is a, well, it'll be a pretty silly one to choose at this time, I think. I mean, yellow background to it, you don't really want that. Black works really well. White works well for a, for a daytime one. Um, so now you've got a black layer covering the whole thing, and we need to get back to our planet. So again, we use this tool here, a rectangular marquee, change it to an elliptical marquee, and you can draw a circle by clicking just in from that top left corner, dragging down to the lower right, there's your circle. Doesn't have to be too accurate, but the more accurate, the better. 
Also, you'll see down here, I've feathered the edges. You can go right up, up or down, around about 80 pixels, I find is the best. If you have it right down here in zero and it's not feathered at all, you will have uh, a straight, sharp line around the edge, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. We want to have a nice uh, merged um, uh, layer there from the from the background into our planet so that it's... Uh, it almost looks like an atmosphere actually when uh, with the daytime ones uh, it looks like an atmosphere around your planet uh, that was my phone just buzzing which you might have heard not my stomach okay so we've drawn our little circle anyway in the, uh, the black layer the top layer go to edit and cut and that cuts a hole through that top layer and reveals our planet again now as I said we didn't have to do this with this this uh, particular planet because the sky was black the background was all black uh, you didn't have to do anything to it, but if you try it with a daytime image, you'll see what I mean about the funny stripey distortions in the corner, and that's how you get rid of them. You put a layer over the top, draw your circle with the feathered edges, and cut it out, and there's your planet. Okay, final thing, you can go in a layer, merge visible, just merge everything together, and that is it. There's 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 your planet. I don't know how long that took, just over 10 minutes probably. It would have been a lot quicker if I wasn't nattering and explaining every stage. It will probably take you longer as you experiment with them and you start off, um, but you'll soon get used to them. You'll soon uh, get used to recognising what images will work and which ones not to bother wasting your time on. Uh, and you'll be able to um, work out how to clone across the, uh, the join there and <coughs> blend that in nicely. So there you go. There's your planet. There's your God complex straight away. Hope uh, to see your efforts. And uh, yeah, join the club. Planet Makers, unanimous. Excellent.